This is Carers World Radio Live with Tom Magna and Patricia Mitchell. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I'm Tom Magna. And I'm Patricia Mitchell. Welcome to Carers World Radio generally and more specifically to this special programme on young carers. Over the next hour or so we'll talk to politicians of all parties about the serious problems we've uncovered at the heart of government plans to change the way carers go about getting help. Plans that turn out to help adult carers but leave the most vulnerable young carers under 18 at the mercy of a bewildering array of laws. Um, as we've just said, we're talking primarily about the Draft Care and Support Bill. Now that, as some of you may know, was actually published uh, beginning of July, July the 11th. We're in the middle of a consultation period, uh, which means that we can all take part in what we feel about the Draft Bill. But for some of you may not know exactly what's happened with the Draft Bill. Well, the Draft Bill has been provisioned really... Uh, it's main purpose is uh, significantly develops adult carers rights and it's really been something that has been welcomed by a lot of people but we want to talk about the the detail of this with particular regard to uh, young carers however in the studio we've got with us John Bangs who's senior manager care commissioning Surrey County Council uh, John you work um, every day with carers it's, it's your role uh, you, you must be very um, appreciative of perhaps what the government's tried to do with this bill. What's your overall response to the draft care and support bill? Well, I think people in local authorities, as far as I can tell, are, are generally very pleased by the idea of it. Um, it does seem to have all party support. It was um, started off by a Law Commission report that the last government produced, uh, initiated, and has been the recommendations accepted by this government and it's about sweeping away 60 odd years worth of uh, very uh, now rambling legislation into one concise bill and that, that's a really good thing and it does strengthen the rights of adult carers but there's the old saying the devil's in the detail <laughs> and for, for young carers there, there are some re very real issues that need to be addressed I mean, to be fair to the government also, I think it's important to, to say that it is very complicated and that's exactly why they, it was so good that they've taken this approach of it being a draft bill. But um, there are some issues that need to be rectified for young carers. From our point of view, it, it seems, I know we, we, we've mentioned this before, both, both myself and, and Tom, when we've had the, this is the fourth of, of four specials on this, on the bill. It seems to us that, as you just said, fantastic support for adult carers. The devil in the detail, the detail that we seem to be picking up on is that there is this increased risk uh, for young carers, child carers, in terms of dropping the previous system for a new system and what that actually in the detail means for young carers being picked up and assessed and put into a system which helps their caring role be minimised for them as they're growing up and going into education and, and, and taking on, on their own life and, and being allowed to do so. So from your point of view, uh, because what we, we've been having a problem with is actually getting people to see the consequences of how the new draft bill, if it were, I'm saying, you know, if it's to be, if it was to be agreed and go through government as it currently stands, what do you see as being, if you like, the hub of the issue? Because it seems to us that young carers have been separated out from adults by virtue of this bill being something that has tried to address adult carers. They're not really being consolidated in that whole duty to assess carers. So if you like, where in the detail of this bill do people need to look to to say, aha, that's the bit that really could be made better for young carers in the future? Well, my understanding is that the lawyer Francis Patterson, who led some of the work for the Law Commission, has said to people, well, look, we were asked to look at issues for adults and we, 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 the Law Commission, did flag that there was an outstanding issue that government would need to think about for both parent carers of disabled children and young carers. So the, the Law Commission um, flagged that there was something that needs further thought. Joining us now on the line to carersworldradio.com, uh, we were hoping to speak speak to Paul Burstow, former Care Services Minister. Uh, we will just try to uh, 
uh, make contact with him. Uh, so what, while we're getting uh, Paul Butter on the line, um, what I would so that an issue has been flagged. We have spoken to people who are who are working with the Act, who it will who it will have a direct response on, and a lot of what they're saying is, well, there's you can rely on the Children's Act to take care of that. Where does that argument potentially fall apart? If if that were to be the case, John, I mean, could you see that happening? And 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 is there a way to make it better from your point of view, from what you see? Well, the Children Act at the moment, you certainly can't rely on it, it uh, on its own because of several reasons. The Children Act is looking is good for looking at children when they need support as a child in need. And it can be used to support young carers, but in the main what young what what's needed for families and for young carers is to support the 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 adult in if it's adult services who needs help so that actually the child isn't uh, a, a child in need and therefore does not need a, a um, children act assessment so what's really important is to give adult workers the tools to do a whole family assessment um, so that young carers don't become children in need in the first place. And Tom Magnet, John, uh, uh, w the picture that we will see emerge during the course of this programme uh, is that uh, people are pointing to education and saying this is where young carers fit in. Uh, and I wouldn't quite describe it as a silence, but we're meeting a bit of, it feels like, oh, we're not sure what to do with this. Do you, would you expect to see a matching piece of legislation, if you like, to go alongside consideration of this draft care and support bill? Well, there are a number of choices and um, there'll be people cleverer than me in government who need to make that choice, but um, the Law Commission did flag that, um, as well as having this new adults uh, measure, that. Um, there was an issue about existing three carers acts and there needs to be some form of consolidation of them into one act or, or into one place so that uh, mere mortals like us local authority workers can actually see the act and understand it. It's, it's important that social work practitioners can do that and that could be in a separate consolidation, carers consolidation act or it could possibly be um, consolidated into the Children and Families Act and those are two choices and there are probably people more expert than me that could say what would be best in terms of childcare. I, I think it's just what, what is coming out for us is that that's, it's great to hear that there are potential s solutions to, to children being at risk so that they don't have to be in need before they get assessed but clearly it's it's been quite a job getting anybody to acknowledge that this they, there may be a little gap in the legislation as it currently stands if it was to go from draft to an actual bill and that's where our concern is actually pinpointing the right department <laughs> to take on and acknowledge that there is an actual issue with this. Well one, one organisation that has some thoughts on that is the Association of Directors of Children's Services to whom we will be speaking in a moment but just let me say we're having some technical problems contacting Paul Burstow so unfortunately I think it's likely uh, we're not going to be able to talk to him on, on this edition of the programme no doubt we will talk to him in the future but talking about some of the issues that you've heard John Bangs uh, senior manager carers commissioning from Surrey County Council talking about uh, are, are the real nitty-gritty problems on the ground Joining us now on Carers World Radio is Colin Green from the Association of Directors of Children's Services. Colin is himself a serving director of Children's Services. Welcome to the programme, Colin. Thank you, Tom. First of all, uh, before we, we look at the potential impact of the Draft Care and Support Bill as it now stands, um, perhaps you could give an indication in, in outline exactly what children's services do in terms of young carers and, and how that fits into the family context. Okay. Well, first of all, it is really important this is seen in the family context. Uh, and for children's services, uh, can, probably two or three really important things that we need to do. One is about uh, children and young people who are carers uh, having access to good universal services. And that means... 
the way their schools or maybe if they're part of voluntary groups or others uh, respond to them, understand the, their needs as young carers, are ready possibly to make some accommodation and do that in a way that is subtle and child-centered. The second thing is that where uh, young carers do need additional support, that may be through uh, being part of a young carers service that provides them with informal support, or where it's something more substantial, that then their needs are assessed. And ideally, that assessment should be done uh, alongside uh, the assessment of the uh, needs for the person who's receiving the care, which may be a, a parent or a, a sibling in the family. So there's a sense of one assessment, and that that, for the young person's point of view, a key part of that assessment is to reduce the impact of the caring role on the young person, uh, and in particular, so you know, for providing services to the person who needs care, so that the young person is not adversely.